Sometimes I call deacons and elders, and I don't call them by their name, deacon or elder, but it is a responsibility. It is hard work, and, and I know that maybe you do or do not understand that if you're not one of them. But Deacon Tim Nichols is sitting down, and he's standing up right now. But uh, he's been a deacon in this church for a long, long time, and he's done a lot of work. When there was no pastors, him, JP, and the guys, they held the church together. And I know you guys are all a part of that. But they took care of things when they need to be took care of. They dealt with issues that you didn't even know were going on. And as he graduates from OSU, Oregon State University, we'll give him a hand. For that. Yeah. And he prepares to go into law enforcement. Uh, he is going to step down as a deacon and focus more on his family and on his work and on his future and let God be God in everything that he does. So we honor him today with all that we are because of the hard work that he has done. Can we stand and give him a round of applause? <laughs> Still a pump for quitting, but no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I understand that uh, his future, we don't even know where he's going to be when he leaves, when he goes to... Find a job that may be in Timbuktu. He may have to go to Tennessee, which would be just as for you. Just kidding. Just kidding. Be good for you. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read one verse of scripture. Isaiah 40. Chapter 40, verse 31. Very, very, very familiar scripture. When you have it, stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. 31, and it says this, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'll read it one more time. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Father, I thank you today for hope, for faith, for all that you do in our lives. You are amazing. And we worship you. Father, I pray today that we have hope and faith when we leave here that we did not have when we came. I hope that you anoint every one of us with a holy boldness today. To walk in your light and in accordance to your spirit. We give you honor. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Isaiah has 66 chapters in it, I believe is correct. The first 39 are basically, literally, them rebuking Israel for the problems. He's rebuking Israel for the sins in his life. 39 chapters of this. The first 35 are literal rebukes. 36 through 39 are historical. But he is rebuking them, if you will. And he's telling them, sin in your life is going to mess you up. Sin is going to mess you up. Sin has messed you up. You were in bondage to the Egyptians. You were in bondage to the Assyrians. And you will be in bondage to the Babylonians. And he writes this book to them. And he's literally taking them and he's, and he's if, if he will, he's preaching hard to them. People don't like hard preaching anymore, right? We don't like to hear that sin is sin and all those things. You guys do, but not most people. They don't want to hear those things. They want to hear about the good stuff. But here's what God did. 39 chapters of that, and then chapter 40, he starts with this. Comfort Jerusalem. Comfort. I want you to understand comfort. I want you to realize comfort. I want you to know that everything is going to be all right. Yes, I just told you that the Babylonians are coming. Yes, I just told you that destruction's on the way. But I want you to understand today that there is hope because I will not allow it to continue forever, says the Lord. The Lord said to them, I want you to take Comfort. Amen. Anybody need comfort today? Yes, sir. One pastor said, you know what? If you always preach to the hurting heart, you always have an audience. Because there's always hurting 
hearts. There's always people that are hurting. But he says this to them, and he says the victory is accomplished. Then he goes on to say this to them, to Israel. He literally says to Israel, I want you to be comforted because your warfare is ended. He just told them that the Babylonians are coming and they're going to destroy them and they're going to consume them. And then he says, I want you to take comfort because the warfare is ended. If I, in my literal mind, cannot comprehend that. But this is what he's saying to them. He is literally saying to them, Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, I have won the victory. The battle is already finished. And although in the physical realm, the war is raging on, I have overcome the world. He goes on to say things like, I'm the one that put the water in place. I'm the one that set the dust in motion. I'm the one that literally did it. I created it all. Do not even think that this thing is going the wrong way. It is going the correct way. Amen. And he shares this with them and he says, princes and kings, who are they that I created? Are they anything compared to me? Yet I chose you. Yet I picked you. I wanted you. I have set you in motion before the beginning of time. He says Re Israel received double. It means literally to fold over. And so the word means to fold over. And what it says is that no matter how long your sin is, my grace covered it. Amen. No matter how much sin there was, if you accept me as Lord and Savior, my fold over covers every inch of your iniquity. I love that. I love it. Then he speaks of the coming Messiah crying in the wilderness. He's speaking, of course, of John the Baptist. And he says he will make the road clear for Messiah to come. And he literally did that in the form of Christ Jesus. He says, lift your voices. Behold, your God will come with a strong hand. He will feed his sheep. He will gather them in his arms, gently leading those who are young. He's measured the water. He's counted the dust. And then he literally says, I have you in my hand. I don't have time to go through this whole chapter, so let me just do it like this. We get to verse 31. And he says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. And oftentimes we in our analytical minds take that word wait and apply it to 2015 where it means well, God will show up at some point. He'll handle this thing. I got it. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. That is not what was written in 15th century English. That was not what was written in the Hebrew language thousands of years ago. It said to hope and literally anticipate with anxiousness. You are to hope that your strength will be restored. He says for those that have hope and that are literally anticipating, I will restore their strength. I will make them like they are young once again when it relates to an anticipation or a hope on our part. And we sang a song, and this was the line that the Lord hit me with. I wrote it down. It said, let our faith be more than anthems. It's not enough to say I'm a child of God. It's not enough to pray the sinner's prayer. I need hope that God is going to deliver me no matter what is going on around me. If America falls tomorrow, my God will deliver me. He will set me free. He will break the bondage of my life. You know why? Because His love conquers everything. And He says if I can just hope beyond hope and believe beyond belief and literally want it so bad that he will strengthen me. They shall mount up like wings of eagles. An eagle is not a predator. 
I mean, an eagle is not a prey. An eagle is a predator. An eagle is not someone waiting for Satan to attack him. An eagle soars above and he says, when you can comprehend the hope in the midst of the hell of your life, when you can comprehend this hope and this love that I have for you, no matter what else is going on, when you can get this thing, you will soar above the problems and you will no longer be praying for the enemy. Yet you will be the one that's ready for the attack. This is what he said. He said, and this all hinges on hope that he just told us he's going to do. They that hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings like eagles. Woo! Kayaking at 5 o'clock in the morning. And there's like going up, fostering up, whatever the name of that river is. And you're going up the river. And you turn that third curve up there on the river. And there's this eagle's nest. And it sets up on one side on the right side of the river. And if you're up there about 5 or 5.30 in the morning, you'll see that eagle swooping down and grabbing that fish and, his, uh, and supplying his needs for the day and for the week. And he literally is up on top. He is not someone that is going to be attacked. He is someone that is going to be the one that takes what he needs because God allows him to have it. Amen. Too many times, too many times it's poor pitiful me, poor pitiful me. God says, if you would just walk in the hope that I gave you, if you would walk in the victory that I provided for you, you will not be in the midst of that mess. Yet our minds are difficult for our minds to comprehend that. They shall run and not be weary. The last few weeks my heart has been heavy for our worship team, for our leadership as we've worked so hard to prepare to build a building and things have come in all directions against us in every aspect of the way and the funds haven't came in that we need yet and the things are going in, in opposite directions and they're, they're working so hard and God is telling me you need to fix the building you got before I give you a new one you need to, to make sure you honor what I've already given you and I'm battling inside and then the worship team they're doing two services a week and I mean they're literally doing a Wednesday night now and they're doing two services on Sunday morning and I know they're getting tired and they're getting weak and people are getting upset and they're leaving the church and new ones are coming in and there's all these things going on and here it is he says if you will hold on to hope that you will not grow weary you will be able to run the race you will literally be able to run the race and all I can think is God I'm weary and he says then you're not holding on to the hope that I gave you you're literally not holding on to the dreams and the promises that I gave you and I was thinking this morning that she was playing the piano God you promised me that there would come a day when Miss Nelson would lift her hands towards heaven and the piano would continue to play and I haven't seen it yet. He said, do you still believe that it's going to happen? And I said, yes, yes Lord, but it's more than an anthem. I have to believe it in my heart. It's not enough to say it. It's not enough to say that I'm not going to be weary anymore. I have to develop so much hope, so much faith inside of me that I'm truly not weary anymore. Amen. Amen. When he gave me this message at 1245 last night. They will walk and not grow faint. Every part of this, hope, mount up, run, walk, is an action on our part. Every part of this is an action on our part. But for every action, there is a reaction from God. And it is deliverance and it is victory and it is overcoming and it is all these things. And I begin to think and meditate on this in my mind. And I say, God, how can I hope that much? He said, because I've already proven myself over and over and over and over. But if you will start believing and trust in the hope that I gave you, these things will be applied to your life. 
glory. 39 chapters of sin. And then he said, take comfort. Take hope. When all things look bleak, take hope. Take hope. God has a better plan. Glory. And I begin to think about the prophets of old. How Jeremiah tells them to pick up their harps. This is only for a season. Play music. Build houses. Make children. This is only for a season. God's plans are so amazing for you. So we got to step into that hope. It can't be an anthem. It has to be faith beyond measure. I love to think about people like Peter and Paul and go, how did they get such great faith? They walked in hope. They walked in such a hope that they lost sight of what was going on in the world and they caught sight of what was going on in the heavenlies. They understood Isaiah 40, 31. They comprehended that this thing is already victorious. It's already won. And I wonder sometimes when I see the seasoned saints and all they want to do is sing about uh, Glory Land Way and, and they're on their heaven and I'm thinking, you know what? They've caught a glimpse of it. They've caught a glimpse that they don't even care if they're here anymore and their family's like, stay mama, stay daddy. And they're like, you don't understand. I'm in the Glory Land Way. You don't understand. Heaven is nearer. And they've caught hope. A hope worth investing your life into. They that hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. As they prepare music, does anybody, anybody in this house need more of God? Do you need more hope? Do you need more strength? Or are you just tired? The world is just warring you down. Are you ready to run but you're just too weak? Are you tired of the devil picking on you every single week? We have hope. Glorious, glorious hope. There's always hope. There's always a bright tomorrow. His mercy will be new tomorrow. Everything will be better. You say, but Pastor, it hasn't been, but it will be. It will be. It will be.